Hello everyone, welcome back to Magic the Gathering Arena, mate. Playing more uh, Premier Draft Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Pretty sure we're taking this Deep Fathom Echo, insane card for the Explorer deck, but let's look around. Uh, it, it won <clears throat> multiple games basically all by itself last time I played Explorer. Um, this would be a phenomenal card to get together with this, but this is just a great card and people take it, so there's, there's just no way it's wheeling. Um, this is also good. I would say, if there's anything we might be able to wheel out of this pack, it would be like Quatley's Final Strike, if we're lucky. Or maybe one of these mediocre white cards. Which obviously doesn't fit with this, but like, maybe we won't be playing blue-green. <clears throat> what is this? Five mana... 4-3 that gives everything plus 2 plus 1. Very good for some sort of token deck. This is a great 3 mana card. Um, <clears throat> the Dark Frog is also quite good. But I'm just going to take a 3 mana 3-4 three, with an ability. That's pretty powerful. It's way too early to be taking Promising Vein over good, good actual cards. I mean, maybe it's supposed to be the frog. The mana dork with reach and death touch is kind of great. Eh. I'll take the big dinosaur instead. Zoetic Glyph is really good in this format. I didn't think it was, but apparently it is. It, you know. Turns out turning a token into a 5-4 for 3 mana is pretty cool. And then you get to discover 3 at the end, so even if it, it trades off, you're still getting another card back. Um, but I think it's maybe supposed to be River Herald Scout, another great card that fits a little bit better with what we're doing. I think these are both very nice. Should I be doing something other than continuing with the blue-green plan? I don't think so. There's another frog, too. Wow. But I'll take the scout. Here, frog is probably the standout. Like, chart, of course, is really good. And it's an uncommon, right? Whereas the frog is a common and we might find some more. Plus, like, this deck doesn't necessarily need a lot of ramp to just, like, barf out two, three, and four mana explore cards. Because the explore cards kind of find their own mana, right? Uh, oh, that's actually pretty strong. A little interesting that that's still here. The wrestler's pretty solid. Cavern Stomper is too big. I think I'll take a wrestler. You don't want a million of these, but one one is fine. I think we're getting good signals for blue. Like there have been good blue cards that you would expect to be taken early by blue decks still in the packs when they get to us. Green hasn't been as powerful, but there have been some okay green cards we've considered taking and then not taken. What is this? Hmm. I feel like Over the Edge is not actually as good as I think it is. This card is kind of nuts. Like, Over the Edge is great if you have, like, things that benefit from exploring. We don't yet. We hope to get... Well, is that true? We don't? Right. We hope to get some. But this, like... I think it's worth speculating here that maybe we could run, you know, this or splash it. Splash the white mana for it in a blue-green deck or something like that. Because it works pretty well. Um... 
with Explore, because a bunch of your stuff, you're getting counters on your things somewhat regularly. Uh, I'm not really doing pirate stuff. I'm not really doing anything with this either, but I mean, it's like a two mana two two, I guess. Mm. I don't think I really want any of these white cards. Tendril the Micro Tyrant. 2 minutes, 2 2 that can like turn your lands into 7 7s. Pretty cool. Uh, everything else pretty bad, so not much else to think about here, I think. Well, this is not the best 2 mana card in the world, but it's pretty good late. It's tolerable early game, and if you draw it really late game, it's a great top deck. No fucking way. River Herald Scout and Watley's Final Strike both wield. That's unbelievable as well as some okay white cards. Well? I think I need the... the removal. Because we don't really have any yet. Huh. I don't know, the Island Cycler? <clears throat> that is unbelievable that those cards would both wheel. They're so good. Unlike these cards. I don't really need ramp or a cave synergy card. Oh, maybe I want a 5 mana 5 for Trample. I don't know. Hopefully not. We probably don't want this. I'm gonna grab the plane cycler in case this Kutsli thing, Kutsi thing turns out to be something. And another island cycler. I don't know, these are both pretty bad. That's not bad for white card. Like Oh man, I always get offered this card. <clears throat> this I always open as my rare this card that's illegal to play. I mean I think oh gosh, the needle is good, but these two cards are great. Not in presence not in the presence of ages, of course, but like River Herald Scout or this. I think the tempo you get out of this is like pretty worthwhile. Maybe one of these wheels, since apparently nobody wanted a River Herald Scout last time. Really? I've never seen this card. This is great. <clears throat> Explores X times. Wow. So the glyph is still fine. Don't think I want. Well, I don't know. Maybe I want a pit of offerings, but no, I want a poison dart frog. I think more than any of these things. Like, so I think glyph is good. Right now, what artifacts do I have that I could glyph up? Not much. Right. So I think I'll just take this to potentially fix for my white card. Abuelo is another white thing we could try to play. It's very good. I think it's worth trying to splash white for these cards. I'm probably not actually supposed to play this because I don't want to cast any double white cards. But maybe if we get even more fixing, we could consider it. Two mana, defender, yeah. 
Um, this is all pretty bad. I'll take the cave. I don't think we really want tap lands, but maybe we do. Twists and turns is perfect. Lodestone Needle. Did we, we already got one of those. Huh. I don't think you need too many of them, and I could use some three drops, I think. The ones I have are like the multicolor things that I might not be able to cast. This one's just like a solid, you know, good tempo play. Ugh. I don't really want the pirates. I'll take a cave. Okay, didn't wheel anything out of this. Oh no, Brackish Blunder is playable. Okay, well, I don't know if we need two of them. Still on the lookout for sources of fixing to make these white cards a little bit more reasonable. So I think it is worth trying to play them both. We have one frog currently, and that's about it, I think, for fixing. Okay, over the edge, I guess. This card looks like fixing because it can search for a planes, right? But if you don't think you're ever going to cast it, it's just a, a planes that costs two. So it's only worth running if you want both to be able to cast it and to be able to use it to look for islands. Sorry, for planes. Um, I don't want a double blue card, and I don't like out of air very much. I'm not, like, in love with Explorer's Cash, but it's probably playable. This can look for a land. I mean, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to run this. It could help us find our planes or something, but it wouldn't be very good at doing that job. Playable. I don't think I'm going to want this, but don't want that. So the glyph is good. I think I'm probably just supposed to think of the River Herald Scout, right? Yeah, seems good. Maybe this River Herald Guide will wheel if we're lucky. Choose three. Yeah, you need a bunch of caves for that to be any good. Forest cycling is okay here. Buried treasure, like, ugh. Could be a way to get us white mana, I guess. But I'd rather just have a forest cycler. This card is gross. Frog is a contender, but not really. Let's say over the edges, I don't know, it's it's always a little hard to get much value out of. I'll take another scout. As many as you give me, I'll take. Uh, staggering size is fine, but... Can we get one of those merfolk cave divers? By the way, I don't think I need two blunders. I mean, even one might be too many. Explorer's Cache is another one that's on my list. <sighs> I 
but it's a way to put counters on stuff, and creatures that explore put counters on themselves, so this cash can build up more things, and at that, if you can, like, really get it to live its best life, it's like a two-mana enchantment that says every turn put a plus one, plus one counter on something, which is pretty cool, right? Um, this seems like a pretty easy River Herald guide. Nothing else is any good at all. The Stone Tree is one of the things I'd like to not play. I think I have more... I have enough good two drops without running that. This is not an obvious choice, I think. Probably it's the Forest Cycler. I don't really have that much synergy for Buried Treasure. Two mana for, like, one white mana is not my favorite deal in the world. Another Charter Course looks probably best here. Don't think I need a third Forest Cycler. Even by Piranhas, I mean, we have very little removal. But, like... I just want to smash face with explorers, so that's fine. <laughs> uh. Lantern. I don't think you're supposed to run this even in explorer decks. But what else am I going to... I mean, I guess, okay, I have several forests and lever cyclers. Reanimate them is maybe... No, give me, give me the, the lantern. It's a one drop that can explore. I guess it's fine. I don't really have anything that triggers on stuff exploring, though, so it's just like a one mana mana sink. Is this anything? No. Well, one frog for mana fixing is going to make these a little tough cast. Do I have any? Like, treasure things? It's just the buried treasure, right? Well, this is, this is our pool of cards, apparently. Um... Four land cyclers is a lot. I think the caves are not very good. I just want more actual lands I can play. I don't really... like. I, I end up taking a bunch of cards that explore, but not many cards that care about exploring. I think, like, the Glowcap Lantern and the Seeker of Sunlight can probably go. I mean, like, yes, Twists and Turns is the one card I have that cares about things that explore. And, you know, this would be better if I had those cards. But tough light. Tough. Life is hard and then you die, as they say. Um, Explorer's Cash, I think, could be playable. The main open question is, like, why am I running these white cards? Are they really worth the splash? Um, I kind of think they are. This completely shuts off some decks. It's like they can't... You, all, you don't have to worry about combat tricks at all. And it's a card draw engine. Um, if you have a source of counters, which... You know, we have exploring, basically, and the river, the explorer's cash. So I'd like to run these. This one has no special synergy at all, but it's just really nice. It's a three mana 2-2 two -two that flyer that's really hard to deal with, and it makes all your other creatures hard to deal with as well if you can keep mana open. But, I mean, I don't know. One question I guess you could ask is why are we running these land cyclers? 
I guess we we aren't really so aggressive that we can say, oh, I'm definitely going to kill the opponent by turn five. That's like probably never going to happen. Um, and so having some big top end stuff available is nice. Um, we might consider treating the you know some of these as actual lands and run like fifteen, and then we'd be there. Um, and if we're, like, actually trying to survive the late game, maybe we actually do more like this. Five forests, five islands, and then, like, two forest cyclers, two island cyclers, an island cave, and a forest cave. And then... You know, we've got three white sources plus the frog for our two white cards. A decent number of green and blue sources for our early game stuff. And some late game uh, chunky dudes <laughs> if we can't finish them off too quickly. Um, I'm a little bit wondering if I should put in a little bit more removal. Right? In particular, Unlucky Drop is available, and the second Brackish Blunder is available. Like, if I'm honest, Brackish Blunder is probably better than Explorer's Cash, right? Just tempo them out and keep swinging, maybe? I have a lot going on on three, don't I? Hmm. Well, I don't want to lose any of it. I don't know. I'll just keep this. What's the worst that could happen? I think this is not as good as our previous Simic Explorer deck. Did that one go seven or was it just six? Seven. Toidles? I like Toidles? Is that the joke? This is... <sighs> this is a forest cycler. Okay, so we're fine on that front. We can run out the scout on two and play this guy sometime. Not totally clear when. Nope. Double green cards need not apply. Okay. This is like the artifacts deck. Hmm. Well, I want to chart a course while attacking, but I also don't want to let them hit me for four. I don't mind the four damage so much as, like, letting them... I probably should mind the four damage, but also, like, lets them do this. <clears throat> I think I'll just play another of these. That's not bad. I can play that next turn together with Forest Cycling this, right? That's fine, I'll keep it. Well, now this guy's looking kind of huge already, right? X is four if I don't draw land, and five if I do. Mm, they're going to punch my frog to death, maybe? It's not that great an attack, really. <clears throat> Uh, 
No. Hmm, okay. I'll try this block, see how it goes. I don't mind trading these. If they have a trick, well, probably only gets one of them, right? Okay, X is five. <clears throat> so I could leave this on top and have a 6-6. Six, six. Or I could bottom it and start drawing lands so I can play this. I think, yeah, get rid of this. Get rid of this too. It's not bad. But I'm not really attacking anytime soon. Get rid of it. Okay. So six mana four four that drew two lands. Pretty cool. And so next turn we could run out this six seven. I'm willing to trade this 4-4 four, four off if they shoot the thing. Because right, if they shoot it, they're kind of saying, you know, you can either take 5 or you can trade your 4-4 four, four down. <clears throat> I don't think I mind trading the 4-4 four, four down. Right? Who's winning this game in the long term? It's not them. Oh, the mana door. Okay. So I can't cast my 7 yet. Fine. I'll block here then? I mean... What is happening? I might block this in case they have the plus one plus zero oh in first strike. That's a thing in this set, right? Um, in LCI mana red instant with first strike in it. Oh, it's plus two plus zero. Oh. But like, why wouldn't they attack with this then? That's what's bugging me. Okay, I guess I'll try to kill the 3 2. <clears throat> okay, just like, looks like it was a mistake. I, I want. Well, actually, I can chart a course without attacking, right? I don't need all these lands. I can. Well, I kind of like all of them, though, right? Second forest is a little useful. I don't know. I'll, I'll hit another forest eventually. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. I would like to play this cast out the Kutsi Kutsil <clears throat> and swing. I think that would be okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've had something in my throat all video. <clears throat> There's it it would have been nice to be able to play the cataract. Because now I like can't cast the island cycler right now. But if I draw any untapped land I can. And I get two draws at it, right? Yeah, see? No problem. You can't cast spells during my turn, you know? Oh, it's your turn. Right. <laughs> I knew that. Uh, 
But I feel like they don't have a combat. Like, why are they doing this? They could have cast combat trick last turn if they had it. And they didn't have one, even though they had a few mana available. So is this just some ploy to get in three damage? It seems weird, right? I'll, I'll trade this guy off, I guess. For your combat trick. Nothing. Okay. Well, playing this is probably my best play at the moment, right? But there's also, like... What if I just tapped their alt sword down and swung in for seven? It seems kind of cool, right? Like, don't forget, you're you're red, but I'm green. Like, we, we both like punching people. I sort of forgot. Do I have any artifacts in this deck? Not really. All right, what are you? Okay. They do have two or more artifacts, so it would be getting plus two, plus one if it attacked. Why not the one two? You want to jump with it, I guess? Okay, I'm still swinging. <clears throat> Maybe I should have discovered first. I don't know. But I don't really want to discover, right? I want to cast the Island Cycler. This this four four has predictably been bananas. Like I've never seen this card. Until I drafted it, and I was like, I saw it, and I was like, oh, it's obviously insane. And look at that, it is. Um, eight mana, could have nine. Okay. Let's crack this, then. No, oh, actually, I kind of want to leave the white mana, don't I? Just put that in hand. There's nothing I really need to blunder right now. So, should I not be running the Lodestone Needle because I don't have any artifacts? Is that a problem this deck has? Kind of is, right? I have the Lodestone Needle itself. The one mana combat trick and one other artifact. The explorer's cache. Yeah. And not much else that makes like that makes treasures, right? I have a you know, brackish blunder might make one. This will make maps. So, like, it could happen. And even if it doesn't, tapping something and putting two stun counters on it is kind of a sick uh, <laughs> tempo play. I think I'll keep it as is for now. Why mess with success, right? We got that six mana one drop. Try to have that in every opening hand. Polycarp? I don't know what that means. This is an awkward hand. It would be much better with a forest, obviously. 
But, you know, with Blunder and an Island Cycler, I can find stuff to do with my mana, I guess. Okay, great. That's The hand is now much better. Red green, so we're expecting some big three mana dinosaur any second now. Are they gonna abrade this? No, just cycle boulder. Hmm. I wouldn't want to put that in most red green decks. I wonder what's going on here. Okay, surprising no one. You have a dinosaur, is that correct? Can't decide which one to show me. There's too many to choose from. A six mana dinosaur. Okay. Well, that's a lot. I mean, it would be nice if I could, like, I guess the order, either order of playing these gets you the same number of explorers, and this is the one that develops the creature out faster and is more mana efficient, so. I don't really fancy this trade. Nothing. Interesting. So I want to run out twists and turns first, see what I'm scrying before I make any final decisions, but probably the opportunity to brackish blunder is what I'm excited about. No. I mean, I could... No. I just want to draw through whatever lands are on top of my deck. This guy... He's not a bad trick, actually, in this situation. Even if opponent knows about it, it's a little hard to play around sometimes. When I have a 5-3 and you have a 3-3. Three, three. I think that's fine. I'm not going to put another counter on this. It's only got one left. I want to make sure that if they kill this... I don't know. I can still put a counter on something else. Maybe I'm being a wimp. Maybe I should have made it a 6-4 before it attacked. That actually makes a lot of sense. Because it deals with this 3-3 without needing a combat trick. And it would have done one more damage, which would be cool. It's like Scry's ETB? Yeah, okay. Sure. You don't have to show me anything. Okay, but you can show me the same one you already did if you want. Sorcery speed only, so you can get this attack in if you want. I'll brackish blunder, though. They don't know that. I mean, I... Yeah. This isn't great, but whatever. It would maybe be better to do it to this 7-7, but... I'm, apparently that's not what I'm going to do. Yeah, I do what I should have done last turn. Actually, maybe I should have mapped first? No. Of 
Because I want to play this and hold up island cycling slash this for my turn. I wonder why it tapped my white instead of one of my blue sources. Doesn't make a difference. I'm fine with it. I don't know what I want to put the counter on yet. Maybe this? But it would kind of be nice for this to be a 7-5, wouldn't it? So I'll just hold off on that decision. Here comes your big dude. Oh no, you're just going to kill my guy? Okay, I can't do anything about that. Unless they have an artifact land I could destroy. Even then, it would be too much damage. Sure. You got it. Yep. Actually, why do I even want Island Cycle with this, right? I'm pretty close to just casting it. Okay, my turn, I guess. That's pretty sweet. Double block won't work because I have this. I was hoping I would draw a blue source. Well. Oh, should I have activated this this turn? No, because I already got the counter on. I don't know. Oh, I shouldn't have played the land. I thought somehow that holding some mana up would be useful. But it's not, and then I could have played the nursery. Whoops. I mean, the beatdown is happening to both of us, but they're about to develop a 7-7, which is a problem. Sort of. Hmm. There's a number of things I kind of want to do right now, right? Like... I want to play this so that I get the explorer with Scry. But I also want to play a 6 7. So that I can threaten to double block this and all they can kill is a 4 5. But I won't have enough mana for that, right? So I think what we do, I think we do this thing. Tapping both white, please. We go to combat. No. Yes. No. No attacks. And then I just play a tap nursery, transforming this. And uh, actually, holding this up doesn't really do anything, right? I think I'll develop a creature with that mana, right? Ooh, a boulder. That's fun. Really? Okay, fine. They must have like a green a green reanimate spell. That, it doesn't reanimate, but it puts back in hand. I don't think they'd be happy with that trade otherwise, especially knowing what I'm about to top deck.
Oh, I tapped. Oh, I should have. I should have played the forest so I could hold up blue mana for this. You dummy. This card's pretty good at this point, actually. Should have played this so I could hold up blue mana. Okay, this cash has been doing serious business. I was skeptical of it when drafting. Okay, that's fine. It's just a 6 5. Nine mana. So, I think just swing with the 6-6 six, six here. We want to put pressure on him. If it trades for the 6-5, I don't mind. And then just develop another gigantic threat. Dinosaur after dinosaur after dinosaur. Prefer to hold the combat trick rather than play out the frog. Even though they know I have it, it's still good. There's lots of stuff I can do with this mana. Let's go exploring, I guess? Why is it tapping all my white? I, mean, I guess that makes some sense. So I might need all that blue and some green. Sure, why not? Well, turns out I wanted the white. Whoops, <laughs> that's not how that works. I just assumed it always had counters on it. Turns out not this time. Yeah, I think just the 6-6 six, six is enough. I don't want to get too risky with my life total. You could have made that block last turn and not taken six damage to the face, so clearly a mistake there. Sure, playing around big combat tricks makes sense. The one you know I have, obviously, just like the double block deals with, but you can block with more if you want. I'm going to kill the 6-5 Trampler that helps you draw. No tricks. They have 9, 11. Yeah, definitely can't get through that. And see, now I was supposed to activate this. Get it? Rude. Uh, or, I'm not rude, just dumb. This costs 2? Yeah. Alright, well, let's see what's in the box. Great. Still not much reason to develop the frog, I think. See, if I had, if I had done this right and put an actual counter on there, they couldn't do this. This, this was, I just like didn't look at the board, and as a result, my 2 2 flyer with Ward 2 is dead. Can't really stop him here. Just a bad play from inattention. Ooh, this is good, isn't it? I 
could go digging first, right? Well, I don't know. Why don't I just use this thing instead? It's cheaper and I get to keep the lands. It's a good one for later. Not like that other opponent who didn't bother to tap this in response. This guy is on the ball. <laughs> sure. I think attacking with this wouldn't be crazy. If I did attack with this, if I put a counter on it, it would be better, obviously. But if I attack with this and they let... Yeah, I don't know. Let's just, let's just chill. I guess the danger of not attacking with this is now they can afford to let one of the four power creatures in instead of having to block it. Sure. Yeah, this damage is fine with me. So doesn't give trample, right? Just haste? Not even haste. That's a good creature. I don't think it's going to save you here, but it is a good creature. Like two quasi tutoring ability. Oh, what are my dailies? I didn't even look after game one. Blue, blue, and blue. The quasi tutoring ability of twist and turns flipped is really strong. Like you don't always hit an amazing card, but you usually hit at least a decent card. And getting to do that every turn is pretty cool. And also, it's non transformed ability, also quite good. Uh, there's a lot of two drops in the deck. I'll find something. And until then, I do at least have some sort of useful stuff to do. Green, green. Well, it turns out I didn't find anything very useful to do. So we're just going to force cycle one of these guys. Okay, well, sure. Interesting, I can put this on their creatures if I want, but I won't benefit from their creatures dying, so obviously I'm not going to.
Just gotta slow him down to try to match my horrible tempo. Pretty cool. What? I'm gonna hang on to this. It's actually like kind of getting close to the time to play a seven drop. Oh man, really punished for keeping this, huh? There's there's a lot of two and three mana creatures in the deck. I thought I would draw one of them. Why on earth would you not mill yourself? You have a descend card in hand. Like, are you running an eighty-nine card deck or something? What's going? Like, I don't know. There's another descend card just sitting there. Good, another seven mana spell. Just what I was looking for. Well, I mean, I could discover here, but it's more important to just, like, keep my seven mana so that I can cast these big boys and hope something good happens to me. Opponent's been going pretty slowly. I mean, I, I have to say I appreciate that. Yeah, very funny. They could counter this. I would just con I wouldn't concede, but I'd be pretty unhappy. But I clearly have to do this. Um let's counter here so I have two blockers for their 3-4. Maybe here makes more sense because they can bounce creatures, perhaps, and then you want them to be They want to bounce a token. So I shouldn't put the counters on the token, I guess. One descend. Okay, that'll that'll increase it some, I imagine. Oh, also this this could disappear without dying, so I wouldn't get the counter back. Is another reason I think this was the wrong creature to put it on. Dumped two permanents. Okay, I mean these are good. Good hits. I I could put out a 6-7 here, but I think getting a couple mid-sized creatures out and exploring with them is better. Oh, wait a minute. I'm probably supposed to final strike this turn, right? Which, I mean, I can do while also playing this creature, but... Hmm. I guess I can't hold up enough mana to... I shouldn't have played this yet is what's happening. I should have played this while I still had... Oh, they don't have any blue, they don't have any blue mana. Okay, so they're not going to be making me pay an extra. Great. Is this a good attack, do you think? They can double block? I mean, I guess I'm okay with that. Yeah, why not? I have a lot more big heavy hitters coming. gonna bring this back huh it's a problem maybe I don't know I mean I have a seven a six seven I can double block it and be fine ooh that's a big boy should go exploring, right? On whom? I guess if this were an 8-9, if I got if I got so lucky, that would be pretty cool. 
But also, if this were 5-5, five, five, that would be sick. Okay. Yeah, that's amazing. Guy's pretty big. He's a big dude. Well, we're not going to be able to outscale this on a single creature, so I'll just put counters on more creatures. That's probably fine. It gets the counter on. That's all I really care about. I guess I could have bottomed it once I got the counter, but I think it, an ex a card that explores is good enough for me. After that, I'll be fishing for a land to flip the maze. Go searching for Abuelo, I guess, because they maybe don't have ways to deal. Oh, they have a reach 4 or 5, I guess. Hmm. 10 10, huh? They probably have some way to remove a creature. So let's just block like that. Eh, no, that just makes things easier for them. Uh, I don't know what they're going to want to kill here. Let's just let's see how it goes. Okay, that's fine. If they can reanimate that, I'll be a lot less happy, obviously. But they traded their giant creature for one of my giant creatures. They traded a punch spell for another giant creature. And one of my little dudes got caught up in the mess. That's, that's life. Yeah, that tap looks right. Mm, actually, double blue, I think. I do want to land, I think, to flip this right away, so I'll keep it. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, wow. Okay. This is till end of turn, right? Yes, until end of turn. Okay. I'll kill the real creature then. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Everybody loves dinosaurs. Can I get a frog? Oh my god. That's really good. I have 10 mana? X is 9, I guess. Hit me. I don't really need to hit more lands, right? Just put nine counters on this guy? I 
I could have bottomed him at the end here, but I think he's actually a useful combat trick. If you can kill this, I mean, more power to you. Like, join the dead would do it, right? I can't count this high, but I assume it's at least four. Yeah, there's definitely four in there. Maybe for that reason, I should have put the last counter on this to save it from Join the Dead. But, like, it's still vulnerable to, like, Join the Dead plus combat, right? So. Alright, let's, let's, let's get down and dirty, shall we? Fight me, you won't. This is face up. Okay. They thought I might not know it was in my hand, and then when I showed that I did, they gave up. Dinosaurs! Dinosaurs! We want more dinosaurs. Although, I mean, that creature was some, like, elf or something, right? But The land cyclers are all dinosaurs, and they played a big role in the game on both sides. Yeah, it's a merfolk, I guess. Yeah, I guess there's not many elves in this set, right? They're merfolk. To this time. But they're basically the same thing, like, you know, mercurial nature creatures. Probably upset the elf fanboys and the merfolk fanboys with that claim, but I think they're about the same. This is not a good hand. I don't have any way to get to green. If I did, these would be great cards to have, but I just have to ship this back. This is way worse. I only have one land. I could, like, search up a forest if I found a second, but I still wouldn't be able to cast any of the spells in my hand. I need to find two land. Well, yeah, two lands. And one of them should be an island, so I'm shipping this back as well. Okay, this is a keep. Put back the lodestone needle... Oh god, I don't have. Any, I still don't have an island. Oh man. And the plains, I guess. Well, no, I should keep the plains. I can put back the forest. I don't need like multiple green sources for this hand. This is a pretty bad hand. We we are far behind at the moment. Okay, I found blue. That is a big big help. If I had drawn this well with my first hand, I'd be happy, obviously. Yeah, I guess I don't know what color I need to keep, so... Dinosaurs. Big shocker. Oh, I could cast this for X is three. I think I'd rather wait. And I might have to just double trade these guys. I don't know. Doesn't seem so good. We're not really that close to spending seven mana on this ability. Especially considering that if you want to make sure the ability resolves, you have to cast it when you have nine mana so you can immediately activate it. And I, I, don't, I, I think I'm just going to need to like try to double trade and lose both creatures to their combat trick, basically. Oh, okay. No trick. And cast this X is four. You know, I've had better. But this is a pretty solid five mana play, I think. Just get a five five out there. 
I don't need more lands. Is this my last explorer? <laughs> he's he's explored four times. This last one. Oh, I guess that was the last one. That doesn't seem right. I thought with explore you put the counter on before. Oh, right. X was only four, not five. I see. I made a 5-5, five, five, but I did it by exploring four times. Okay, yes, my fault there. I could have bottomed him. I don't think he's a terrible draw, though. Hmm. This is not so great. This, this contested, and I can play it pretty soon. But at the moment, I'm a little bit naked. What is this? A buried treasure that they can exile to discover. Pretty good card. They're going to be flipping it next turn, I imagine. Why that one? Why not the 4-3? Isn't a 5-3 a lot better than a... Or 5-4 a lot better than a 4-4 right now? I mean, I could double trade against this. These guys aren't really... Well, this guy is doing something, right? Yeah, because next turn I could just turn my lands into 7-7s. Seven I was thinking of playing this, but this is way better. So I'll just chump 7 damage. Oh, this is... I could have done that at instant speed, I guess. And since it taps itself, it's like not that great, but... Hmm. I think you're supposed to do this first, and then maybe explore with the scry on this guy, for example. And only then play the land. Woo! Okay. I think I have to let in the 8 here. This is too valuable. What is, oh my god, it's the tortoise. Okay. We're in some trouble here. But I think developing a 6-7 is pretty cool right now. Rather than using this ability on a land, which would make it be a tapped land. This gets out another creature that can block right now. And the ability to double block the 8-8 is pretty important, I think. I, I'm behind for sure. Actually, I guess when I remarked that they made a bad decision here by doing this and before exploring, all this gives them is the scry, and they could have looked at the top of their deck already. They should have at least played this before flipping, before playing the land. And then once they saw what was on top, they could have decided whether to scry at the bottom or not. Oh, God. My land. Okay, but I can still double block with a 6-7 and a 5-5. 
Actually, if they swing all of my toast? Like, I definitely don't have to die, but I might have to accept some really unpleasant trade-offs. Cast a permanent spell, discover X. Oh, that's so bad. Okay, I guess that trade is happening. They're descending. This is nice, I think. Oh, it doesn't work on their turn. All right, it's not that nice. It's only for creatures, too. They have two other dinosaurs. This is a nightmare. What am I supposed to do here? I mean, don't let the game get to this position, I guess. Actually, I should be targeting planes here. I mean, I've got them trading, like, giant spells for my lands, which is kind of nice. But I, I'm going to run out of lands eventually. <laughs> you should explore. A forest is kind of cool. It would let me make another thing into a land. It would let me flip this. That's probably good enough. Oh, their stuff doesn't have hexproof right now, by the way. Because they lost the turtle. If I bounce this into their hand, they're going to draw two more cards? I mean, maybe I'm milling them? Just trading all of their stuff against my lands? Get out of here. Giving them unlimited gas. They're not going to try to descend. Well, that's nice. Three, six, nine mana. If I want to spend seven animating a land, then I don't really have enough to do anything else. How did this get? How do I know they have this? Oh, they must have gotten it from this, I guess? But then when did this get played? I don't know. Maybe they've had it for a while? Why not play this before this? Draw even more cards. I don't know. Uh, I think it's just too important to be able to make a 7-7 and block with it, so I will be playing nothing this turn. Maybe I should have made a 7 at end of turn. No, I, I couldn't afford it. I had cast Brackish Blunder. Although... Did I have enough mana to do that as well? I'm not sure. Quatly. Five mana, exile, then bring it back transformed. Make two three threes. Double strike and trample. That's a problem. I need some way to deal with the enchantment side of that, the saga. I don't really have one. 
I think that's gonna kill me. This is so many dinosaurs. Actually, I might want multiple white sources, right? If I end up needing to cast my one of my white creatures and then it, it's the flyer and I want to activate the ability. Oh boy. That's pretty tough. I think I'll take a turn off from turning my lands into 7-7s. Seven Will I? I guess. Should have done this first, probably. I don't know. It tapped all my blue. My fault for not checking, I guess. Well, I can't cast that anyway, because it's on my deck, not in my hand. thing is, like, drawing this card kind of guarantees I'll lose the game, but I don't have a better idea. Right? Oh, Thrashing Brontodon would have done it. Oh, I should have bottomed this and been digging for Thrashing Brontodon. Whoops. I can, okay, I can still look for it with the Mycoid thing next turn. I should have been digging for it instead of playing these shitty creatures. I don't know. The thing is, they have so many dinosaurs that even without this, I'm in trouble. Not because they're dinosaurs, but just because they're big creatures. I have nine mana. Yeah, I mean, if I if I draw the Brontodon, I can blow this up. It's not here. This is the end of the game. No, oh, okay. They're still only on step three. I have one more shot, maybe. I could even forest cycle this if I wanted to thin out my deck a little, but that would shuffle these cards that I... I know all of these are not Thrashing Brontodon. They'd be shuffled back in. No dinosaurs remain, huh? Or they don't want to mill out, maybe? God, they can cast dinosaurs from the graveyard now, too. <laughs> oh, God, help me. I'm so dead. Kind of shaking my head in wonderment at what's happening over there. Oh, they even get to swing at me with a 7-2 trample to make me uh, lose a creature. 
I think they should. And let's it gives them to the descend, which they should appreciate, right? I block with the two three, I think. I'm I'm kinda of looking forward to next turn. It's gonna be like a miracle of nature, right? When, you know, there's just that you see thunderstorm or like hurricane footage and it's like, wow, who knew the universe could be this horrible? Um, that's sort of what I anticipate happening next turn. Even if I don't, even, even if I get rid of this, I'm clearly dead. Uh, and so maybe I should just choose not to kill it and enjoy myself. Yeah, this doesn't win, so... No thrashing brontodons to be found, huh? Well, I would like to show it to them. Is it on top now? No, it's just a dang old forest. Yeah, sure. Become... I don't know. This? Die. <laughs> Good game. Uh, yeah, let's just no blocks. I could have had it become a copy of the forest and then tapped it for mana. Wouldn't that be funny? Please, click attack all. I, I need it to happen. Yes! None of my creatures are blocking, I can assure you. Is there any way I could live through the first strike and then die to double strike to maximize the damage received? I don't think so. So let's just die as much as possible in first strike. Okay, and then they had another 38 behind. So we would be at minus 68 there. strong stuff over there uh you know right like that's my deck in many of the games that i have won it has won by like getting to the mid game and putting out a large number of large creatures and their deck just did that way better I forget if this was a game where I struggled early, like, with my mana base. I know I had one of those games. I don't know if it was this one. It was so long ago. So I got that... Yeah, I, I played the, the the Explore X creature this game for X is 4, right? That was, that was still this game? That's why I had a 5-5 five five lying around all the time? I think? Yeah. And the 2-2 two -two that I played early on, I was like, I just need to get something on the board. Surely we won't get to 7 mana. And then we, like, totally did. This is a pretty bad hand. I can't cast any spells, right? This island cycles, but it doesn't forest cycle. So I think we dump it. This also, well, it can chart a course, I guess. I'll put back the green-white card. Nice. I think you usually don't want to play that out on one, but what do I know? 
Am I charting a course already? I think I'll just island cycle. I don't know, that's pretty stupid, right? I need I need green mana to do something. But what I would do is only a 2-2. Two -two. Let's just island cycle. Now I can forest cycle, which seems cool. Opponent's having a good time though with twist and turns and treasure map. They're just dirtling over there for hours, huh? run out of creature oh actually they didn't they missed a third land okay that's something i could chart a course here because i have a lot of lands to spare but i want to wait until this can attack which it very well might be able to next turn also it might not be able to no i can brackish blunder to bounce their blocker there's a tongue twister for you just to keep them behind on tempo they're obviously starved for mana. Resolves. Yep. It's a 4 2. If I put this back in their hand, they might actually thank me for it, right? Because they get to explore again, digging for lands. Yeah, it's probably not worth it. Right. it turns out maybe scry uh, charting a course last turn would have been better. I'm gonna do it now with sadly discarding. Uh, yeah, I guess that's how I want to tap. No, I want to tap double blue. In case I draw this. It's going to be really tough for them to pay the ward 2 to kill this. And if they can't kill it right away, it could become quite a problem. But, I mean, their board's pretty cool. Red. Oh, another dinosaur lord, huh? Okay. Dinosaur enjoyer has entered the chat. Deciding whether to attack with the 4-2? Yeah, it makes sense. Incredible. Keep. Snap keep. I guess I'll swing with this. It's not really going to want to block, right? So. Alright, I mean, Twist and Turns has seen them uh, find their way to a much better board position. And the treasure map, I guess. I don't need. Get out of here, you dang old stops. I'll trade for twos, I don't mind. Uh, or do I trade for this? I'll trade for the Vigilant one, I guess. I can blunder this away just to buy some time. Seems all right. It gains them life, but who cares? That is a decent card. Hmm. I think 
think I'd prefer an actual land to be animated by this, though. So get that out of here. Decline. And hold up the mana for flicker rather than activating the map. Annoying. You can get some damage in this turn if you want. I mean, let's be honest, I probably wasn't blocking with that anyway, but they've taken a counter away from it now, which is nice, right? What, what was revealed? I saw some dinosaur. Oh, it's this one, okay. It was not easy to see in their hand to distinguish from a card back. All right, those look kind of similar. Oh, okay. I mean, I could make a land into a dude right now. That would be pretty cool. Let's see what we get at the beginning of combat, though. No, I want lands. Decline. Still swinging with this. So I could make a tapped 7-7, seven, seven, but I think I would rather do this for X's 6. Mm, this is two cards, but lands are great, spells are great. This any good? If they don't have any lands, I could blow up the twists and turns before it flips, but I don't think that's that great. That's something, but not that great. That is a card. Okay, let's keep that one. I would have preferred, like, a land at some point in there to have drawn one and... But okay, a 7-7 seven, seven is still pretty cool. I forgot they had flipped the treasure cove, didn't even notice. Okay. It's a big creature that was threatening to get bigger. Makes sense. I do have a 7-7, seven, seven, though. No, you can't. You would Okay. This is good. In some sense, though, it's not as good as a land. It's probably fine, right? There are worse spells in the deck than this one. I don't want to mill super, super hard. This is a cat? Okay, I mean, I guess. It doesn't look like that's the noise it would make, though. No reach creatures. The funny thing is, I could actually island cycle this now and play the island. And then, like, turn the island into a 7-7, seven, seven, which I think is better. I don't know. A ward 3-6-7 is probably better, right? Probably. I 
I mean, I, I don't have Flicker up right now. This is the turn. You could, you could kill something usefully with removal. They're going to start hitting gas, though. Like, that's... They will have good creatures. Oh, this is the one that's insanely good. Okay, good for you. I'm not confusing it with the one that's just like a mediocre mountain cycler. This guy is great. Alright. Pretty cool. Maybe they don't have any way to deal with a single flyer? That's my hope. Well, a single flyer and a bevy of 7-7s, seven I guess. Oh, do you know what? Animating a land is actually better because... No. If they attack and hit the enemy, sure, that does count as this, because their base power would be zero, right? Um... But I'm not swinging with these 7-7s seven anyway, right? They're, they're just blockers, so... Oh, that's nice. Eight mana. Well... I mean, I could tap this down is a thing I could do, but it doesn't seem that great. I think we just pass, hold everything up. Maybe animate a dinosaur or a land if we have to. Like, we probably will. But it might depend a little bit on what opponent does somehow, what attacks they declare. Okay. So you're going to kill my 2-2, I guess? Seems good. Can't argue with that. Just in case of some combat trick, obviously we want to make sure we really do kill it. I want to be a little careful of milling, so we're drawing two cards a turn with Abuela and uh, with, with our two white cards, I guess. But uh, I think we're doing plenty of damage that that's not, like, necessarily a huge problem. Notably, I could have kept this creature alive a little longer by using Lodestone Needle to tap down their creature before attacks, but then I wouldn't be animating a land this turn anyway, and I would just get like one land animated total. Uh, do I have an artifact in the graveyard? Ooh, the Explorer's Cache is in there, so this, this could flip at my leisure. I'm glad I kept this, because I didn't really have if, I had, if this had been a land, I wouldn't have been able to animate two lands. So I animated a different land, and I get to play this now. It's just a 4-3. Is my twist and turn still in here? They missed? Okay, good to know. So I don't think I really need to tap down any of their stuff. What if I swung with both of these? I think that makes sense, right? Like, they don't have great blocks for a 7-7 seven seven on the ground anymore. I I'm happy to trade this off for whatever. I want to put on a little more pressure, and I'll have sufficiently good blockers anyway. Is 
That's ten, huh? Okay. And two draws for me. Oh, one or more? Okay, one draw for me. Dino Town. How did that Explorer's Cache get in the graveyard, by the way? When did I, when would I have milled it? I don't remember doing that. I, it must have been with an, like the big Explorer maybe off of um, my 7-7? Seven seven? Or, or maybe it was one of the Deep Fathom Echo Explorers? I don't know, I don't remember this happening. Okay, great. I was a little nervous, because they, they have a lot of power on attacks. They could, you know, with only two blockers, I could be in some trouble. But apparently I wasn't. Great. A mastery orb, I guess. Oh, and we're at four wins, which is like... Technically not break-even, but I consider that the break-even point, because you'll have won some gold on your dailies, and that's making up for the 100 gems you're losing. You're, you're at least... If you could reach four wins every game, you could play draft forever. I think this is a keep with uh, River Herald Scouts to... Um, find me lands. I'm not sure if I play this on turn one. Um... I think I actually do, because I have stuff to do with my mana, like, forever. I'm never going to squeeze this in otherwise. So while I miss the ETB trigger from this, I do gain the scry trigger from the next couple of explorers. Really? Five color caves? Okay. I mean, yeah, forest looks pretty cool. I'll take it. I don't know. You're probably, like, supposed to bottom it, and, like, if you hit a forest, if you hit a land, you're happy enough. If you hit a spell, you're probably happy enough. I don't know. Really? Okay, if you insist. It seems like a very low value proposition here. But I guess they, they want to get it on the board so they can craft it? I don't know. Weird. Okay. I mean, I can't play that right now, but when I can find my white mana, I can flicker this to uh, get it back. No. No. Not bad, actually. But I want a, a plains. Or a frog. But removal is pretty good right now. I think I sort of have to keep this. I say it's good right now. Like, they don't have any creatures. Why is it good? Because if I can keep it that way, with them having no creatures, I'll be pretty happy. Land, please. Not charge a course. 
I don't really want to attack into this. I want to draw land so I can play this and then attack. No? Well, I could land cycle it, I guess, but I'd rather not. Okay. This is not great, but keep punching in with that damage, please. Or start punching in with that damage, I guess. What is this? Okay, the red white, the blue white turns into a 2 3 flyer for three. That's pretty cool. Esper cave control? I don't know. You know I have this, right? I mean, I guess they have to do something. You found a way to deal with it. Attack? <laughs> really? I guess if you're not playing chump, you might as well. Sure. So I could cast this. Yeah, this is lethal. Blow up their petrify and swing for seven. Four mana disenchant. Still good sometimes. Well, I never got that planes to un to flicker my cool map maker lady. But you know, I just played some big creatures and opponent had a slow deck that didn't really do anything. This is good. I have a tap land for blue, and then a plains and a forest cycler, and then I can start doing stuff. I'll take it. Sure. Actually, the frog, yeah, it doesn't really curve out very well. A promising vein. swing in blunder the frog to kill this it looks a little suspicious that I'm not exploring first but opponent may not notice okay fine in that case a frog of my own holding up blunder and death touch and cycling for my lands
Got a lot of maps. Might get another this turn if they attack. Okay. I'll just force cycle. Again. I could have six mana. It doesn't cast this. Crack a map, I guess? I can flip this using the map tokens, actually. That might be kind of cool. I'll keep this. And not attack, because they can just frog me. Oh yeah, I have enough mana I can do even more, don't I? I forgot the frog makes mana. Sure, why don't you become a 2-3? Have fun. It's on me. I mean, if I hadn't played out all this sorcery speed stuff, I could have bounced the frog, but I didn't need this creature that badly. I'm sort of imagining this creature becoming so big that, like, I want it's gonna be like maybe a five-three, right? But also, it might not be. I think I'll just get rid of that. Final craft. They still haven't found time to crack their promising vein, by the way. Even when... Yeah, I guess that's true. The turn they, like, held up all their mana, they gave the frog death touch and then punched me, so... That makes sense. Um, I'd like to swing with the 2-3, and I think exploring first is fine. It's kind of not fine, because I need mana to play this, right? But I, I, charting a course seems okay. Let's tap green. Fine. It still gets to explore. I think you maybe would have preferred to blow up the art. Oh, no, it doesn't. I see. Because there's no target for this ability. If it were a creature that said, like, this creature explores then there would be no target and the ability would still resolve. But that's not how this works. Okay. Well, that is a little bit sad. I guess I just... I could swing with the frog to chart a course? I think that's not crazy. They're going to welcome the opportunity to block with their 2-2, I think. I don't know, maybe this looks too much like a combat trick? Obviously, the Death Touch combat trick is face up.
I'm happy to go through with this. I just needed to attack something. One mana spells in the deck. I have twists and turns in green and the God, blue dude. I guess twists and turns is what I would rather play proactively here. Actually, twists and turns. Uh, you know what? Let's tap like this. Because if I get the blue dude, I can use it to try to trick the frog. Nothing. Okay. That's a little scary. This frog's been doing heavy duty, by the way. Both of these creatures wouldn't be here without the frog. Huh. And now I can't cast this anymore. Because I don't have my own frog. I sort of figured eventually I would draw some lands. This is a real problem. Well, is it though? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, it's so good if I have more mana, but I don't. I'm gonna eat seven damage to the face here, I suspect. a double block here they probably have a trick but if not you know that would be cool well they're ordering it like they don't have a trick great I got to trade my one two for their six five Sadly, they have another 6-5. But that's, that's what this is for, right? I got the counter on this so I could punch 6-5s. Or maybe 7-7s. Seven okay, let's explore again. With green mana. It's a land. Okay, fine. Does this do anything? Not really. But it gets on the board, and I think I'm going to blunder the 6-5? And take 7? Maybe 8 if they swing with the 1-1. One, one. Okay, I'm denying myself the map token, but I'm denying them the uh, Discover 3, which is clearly better. the point of the game where that gets kind of relevant, doesn't it? Oh, this is actually a mana ramp for if this is equipped to a dinosaur. I think you should... I don't know. Well, okay, I guess it won't be. But this is, this is now a tap-down ability on a super cheap creature, which is cool. So I just have to run this out. And double block the 7-7. Seven, seven. It would be nice to be able to punch it, but I just am not in that universe. I can't double block it. So they can tap down the the four five? No, the six seven, I guess. 
It's expensive, but they can do it. I'd have to chump with uh, Abuelo. for lands, I'm looking for counters. But, I mean, I'm now in a position that I can Hotley's Final Strike this dinosaur. I think I should do it on my turn. So they don't get to do some combat trick in response. Who should be exploring here? Like, it looks kind of cool right now to swing with the 7-7, seven, seven, right? And if I made it an 8-8, eight, eight, wouldn't that be neat? But I think I want another blocker that can deal with this guy. So I'm going to put the counter here, if possible. Charity course is quite nice. It's not a dinosaur. Oh, they have two mana anyway. Whoops, I'm bad? I forgot the frog makes mana. And this thing can stop me from blocking with the 5-6 I made. Oh my god. What have I done? That was just oh, the worst attack I've ever made, I think. <sighs> okay. Well, let's draw two and discard a forest, I guess. You can still activate abilities on my turn, right? Of course. Uh, that attack through the game. I thought they couldn't activate the frog. I don't know what I'm looking for with this, but... This is certainly not doing it. Oh, I'm just dead. Okay, great. Really wish I had a 7 8 right now. Well, that, that game probably went to the better player. Thought it would be nice to push in a little damage. Forgot. I was like, they only have one land. Frog can't activate. But it can. It's a, it's a mana source. That frog was MVP of the game for them. I still have... I don't, that's only my second loss? I thought I was out of here. Okay, five and two. Still a chance to go all the way, playing badly. Falurn. Falurn. This is fine. I have a two drop and good mana. Two chart, of course. That's probably good. I don't 
really have a way to craft this. Let's just get it in the graveyard. You currently don't control a dinosaur. Okay, that's damage, all right. It's very expensive to re-equip, though. I would like to be able to play the frog this turn if I hit a land. That's a dinosaur. This is a big creature. I'm about done charting courses, I think. Give this death touch and punch the 5-4, I guess? But do it on blocks? So that I can also trade it for another creature? Yeah? No attacks, no plays, no lands. You go. Well, okay, I only get one of them, apparently. That resolves? Why are you asking me if it resolves? Oh, because it's an ability targeting one of my mana sources. It, like, just generally speaking, asks you if you want to do something when that happens. I didn't even notice that would be shrinking the chomp, but it's still big enough to kill a frog. Okay, so we forest cycle this and then play a big 3-4 and try to double block. I don't think they have more burn removal, because if they did, they would have killed the frog in response to my trying to punch them. This 5-4 is a problem, obviously, because it has, like, super menace, and it can be a 7-whatever. So... I mean, there are issues. I can bounce it once, that's fine. I guess what that means is I need to get out this guy in a bit, like next turn, because he makes multiple blockers. So I want to island cycle this. And I'll do it in main phase. So that I can play the known land, and they won't know if I have this forest. Not that that's a huge issue, but like, it just seems nice. It's a matter of general hygiene to do that. Yeah, that's that's a lethal creature. You got me. It's got Mega Menace.
I mean, I don't think the tap land makes a lot of sense. It's really nice to be able to spend seven mana this turn. And I could spend it even on this, but I don't think they have any hasters, probably. I'm just going to swing in here and hope for the best. And get this guy out here. How do you like them dinosaurs? Ah! It's a 6-5. Okay, it kind of doesn't do anything right now. It can become an 8-7. Attacking with a 5-5 is not really a very big threat is the problem. They would just let it in happily. So I think we play this. I have activation of this ability available, but it would make a tapped creature, so I couldn't block. But I have good enough blocks anyway. I don't think I want to activate the map. I want to use this. Flash this out? No, because it tells them the right way to order blockers. And I don't really need it as a blocker, so we do this. Actually, they're tapped out, I guess. I don't have to include this in there if I don't want to, right? They'll order killing this first anyway. So I guess it doesn't matter. I guess I'll do this, so if they feel like killing two 3-3s three instead, they can make that mistake. But they're going to want to kill a 5 and a 3, right? So let's not offer them this one. You can have that one. I don't know. I think it works out. Oh, they're not going to kill a 5-5. Five, five. Nice. They just want to make sure they get something of mine. Fair enough. Eight mana. If I make a 7-7, seven, seven, do I kill them? I think it's pretty close. Oh, this costs a double green? Maybe I'll animate an island. Because if they don't trade, if they try to eat one of my creatures here, they're dead. So the best they can do is trade for something like this. And then they're still dead. So they have to trade with the 7-7, seven, seven, which is fine with me. Or not trade, chump Nice. I guess I died with huge haster here. Maybe I should have held back one creature, but then they wouldn't have had to jump, so... I think this was best to just like, okay, if you have a hot foot gnome and can equip this and have two more damage, I guess you got me. Alright, nice to beat a dinosaur's deck with one of those gods in it. Marky Mark. I feel like I've played against this before, or maybe it's just that Marky Mark is enough of a meme that, like, it looks familiar to me for no reason? I'm not sure. This looks fine. Um, only tapped lands is a bit of a bummer. But they're in both colors, and I have a frog and a twists and turns, so... There's some question of what to play first. I think there isn't, though. It's supposed to be green, because the green spells I have are the important ones. If I draw an untapped land, I want to cast a frog. Yeah. Hmm. 
no locks. Blue white. Okay, so like flyers and artifacts is what we're expecting. Too many flyers. I don't like this. Need lands. Ugh. Yeah. Makes sense. I don't have a brackish blunder right now. Let's see. Swing with this for sure. Twist and turns on it first? Probably not. Now we chart a course. And then I'm not sure what. Well, I guess it's twists and turns on the frog. It's actually kind of cool. Sure. Now I threaten to block both of these without having to activate Death Touch. Well, this one's a bit... Well, I threaten to block this one this turn and this one in the future because of the guy they know I'm drawing. And I have Death Touch if they attack with a Buelo. And I have I, I have land cycling if they do none of these things. Although we're getting close to the point of just casting them, right? Well, that's sad. One stun counter? Yeah. That's a big problem. Can't really cope with that. Oh, I forgot I could have island cycled before they tapped this down. I yeah, whoops. Or land cycled. But as I said, I don't think it's actually all that great to do so. X is four? No lands, please. That's pretty good. I could kill Abuelo and then this frog would deal with the other flyers. They get to flicker it so I, the frog stays tapped down. You should have done that on my turn, though, not yours. And you should have targeted the frog. Hmm. Weird. Costs five mana, so I will still have Frog Death Touch up. They 
have some trick. Yep. Oh, I hate these blue decks. How dare they? <laughs> uh, that will technically not be lights out yet, I suppose. I can take just three. No, this is going to kill me. Okay. I'll just cast a blue spell and get out of here. I think I finished my dailies, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. They had a good flyers start, and uh, Abuelo didn't really take over the game. This thing was the big problem, right? Abuelo got its trigger again, but not in a way that was super important. They just had a couple of control tricks, interaction, and uh, you know, more more cool stuff than I did. Still, a solid result. Uh, rewarded, I think, for splashing those two white cards. Although, also sort of punished. We'll see. <laughs> My mana base uh, was a little creaky in some games. But then in some other games, those two white creatures kind of carried. So, it seems worthwhile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.